I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. I invite you to take your Bible, come with me, if you would, to Joshua chapter 5. I want to read the first seven verses, and then we will get into this particular passage of Scripture. It says in Joshua chapter 5 and verse 1, And it came to pass, when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the other side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over, that their heart melted, neither was their spirit in them any more because of the children of Israel. At that time the Lord said unto Joshua, Make these sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. Joshua made him sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the hill of the foreskins. And this is a cause why Joshua did circumcise all the people that came out of Egypt that were males, even all the men of war died in the wilderness by the way after they came out of Egypt. And all the people that came out were circumcised, but all the people that were born in the wilderness by the way as they came forth out of Egypt, them they had not circumcised. For the children of Israel walked forty years in the wilderness till all the people that were men of war which came out of Egypt were consumed because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord unto whom the Lord sware that he would not show them the land which the Lord sware unto their fathers that he would give us a land that floweth with milk and honey. And their children whom he raised up in their stead them Joshua circumcised for they were circumcised because they had not circumcised them by the way. So, just to bring you up to date on what's been going on here, of course, you know, if you've been following our devotional series, but the children of Israel have just passed through the Jordan River. We've seen the significance of that and the, the altars that they built, the monuments that they built, the memorials that they built. And now as they have come across the Jordan River, they are on the brink of the land of Canaan. They're right there. Canaan is before them. And it seems a question that is asked as we come through Joshua chapter 5 to the nation of Israel is, are you ready to conquer your Canaan? Notice what it says in verse 1. It says, and it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of Jordan, Westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over, that their heart melted, neither was their spirit in them any more because of the children of Israel. So the very beginning verse of chapter 5 tells us that the heathen nations in Canaan saw the powerful manner in which the Lord had brought his children through the Jordan, and that they were they were totally demoralized by these events. The Bible says that their heart melted, neither was their spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel. It would seem, as we look at this, that they were absolutely resigned to their fate. It would appear that this would be the perfect time for the children of Israel to go and to attack them. It would seem like the perfect time for Joshua to lead them forward into this attack. But instead of commanding his people to go forward to battle, Joshua commands them to remain at Gilgal and to do several things. And I'll be honest with you, on the surface, these things may seem very strange. It even appears that the things that they are required to do would even put them at risk before their enemies. But friends, let me remind you, the ways of the Lord may sometimes seem strange to you and to me, but God's ways are not our ways. Keep your finger in Joshua 5 and come with me, if you would, to Isaiah 55. And in verses 8 and 9, God reminds us by saying, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Friends, we need to remember, God is never in a hurry. He has the liberty to take his time and do things on his schedule, not on my schedule. You know, many times that's hard for us to really grasp a hold of. We don't like to hear that. We want God to move according to our time frame, but friends, God's not obligated to move according to my time frame. So as we come back to Joshua chapter 5, while the things in this chapter may seem strange to us on the surface, especially if 
a group of people is preparing for battle. Let me remind you, friends, that God's people are engaged in battles that are much deeper than the physical realm. In fact, before the battle even begins in the physical realm, it had already begun in the spiritual realm. God's battles are spiritual battles. And if we're going to fight these battles and do well, friends, we must make the same kind of spiritual preparations that Israel is going to make in this chapter. Come with me, if you would, to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I want to read verses 3 through 5 for you. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. In verses 3 through 5, it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You see, that's exactly what God is doing here in the life of the people of Israel. And it's exactly also the same thing that he wants to do, friends, in your life and in my life. You see, we all have battles that we face. And if we expect to overcome, if we expect to achieve the victory, then we must learn that we need to make the right spiritual preparations if we're going to have victory. Israel appeared ready for battle. They appeared ready. They possessed a large army. They faced an enemy that was terrified at their very presence. However, God knew that they would never be ready to fight and win this battle until the right spiritual preparations had been made. And that's what Joshua chapter 5 is about. God has some lessons that he wants to teach Israel as they stand there ready to take their Canaan. And friends, these lessons that God is going to teach them in Joshua chapter 5 are not only lessons that help the nation of Israel as they went into Canaan, but friends, they are lessons that help us today as the people of God as we go into our Canaan as well. So with that in mind, as we conclude today, let me ask you a question. Are you ready to conquer your Canaan? Have you made the right spiritual preparations? You say, well, what are those preparations? Well, we'll see that as we move through this chapter. But friends, you're only ready to conquer your Canaan if you're willing to make the right spiritual preparations. And as I say, these preparations will be taught to us in this chapter. So we're going to take a couple of days to move through this chapter and to consider the steps that Israel was commanded to take before they could conquer Canaan. And as we do this, friend, I want you to ask yourself whether or not these things have been taken care of in your life. They were things that Israel had to take care of in order for Canaan to be conquered, and they're things that we need to take care of in our life as well. So as we move through this, may we allow the Holy Spirit of God to search us and say, Lord, have I taken care of these things in my life? Because until these things are taken care of, you'll never be able to conquer your Canaan. Friends, are you ready to conquer Canaan today? Are you ready to have the victorious Christian life that God has promised you? Yes, there's still going to be battles. Yes, there's still going to be struggles. But what I'm asking you today is, friends, do you long to live in the victory that only God can provide for you? God is the one that provides the victory, but yet there are certain things that you and I do to put ourselves in the place that God can work in and through us the way that God desires to work. Are you willing to make those preparations? Are you willing to take those sacrifices? Or are you not willing and as a result, you'll spend your life on the banks of the Jordan River. You'll spend your life on the brink of Canaan, but you'll never enter in to what God has. Remember, Jesus says, I'm come that they might have life, that they might have it more abundantly. Christian, are you experiencing that abundant Christian life? Maybe you're listening today You've never even trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Let me remind you that step one to a life that pleases God, step one to a life of purpose and fulfillment and peace, is coming to that place that you acknowledge your sinful condition. God, I'm a sinner. I, I, I deserve the judgment of God that is already upon me. 
But Lord, I thank you for loving me that Jesus died on the cross for my sin. And best as I know how, I repent of my sin and I trust Jesus Christ to save me. That is step one, friend, to entering into this Canaan. Have a great day.